Hello and welcome along to another episode of The Good, The Scars and The Rugby and partnership with our friends at Allianz. Uh, we have the band back together, um, Mike Tyndall in the studio with me. Hi. Why are you looking so excited? I'm always excited. I love that. Uh, straightens up uh, his back and says, yes, he's uh, here, present, ma'am. Emily Scarrett is at home on her one day off during a big Six Nations week. She has given us some of her time. She is waving. Um, what's it like being back home, Emily? It's really nice, but it's just a whirlwind of washing, drying, repacking, sorting stuff out so it's really nice two nights in your own bed is definitely super nice but it's also a little bit chaotic trying to get the bag back together show me the equipment that you were waving around now like it's a lollipop so i'm going to take this back into camp because some of the girls have been loving karaoke i walked out of um the team room the other day connie powell ellie kildern rosie gallagher and mo were sat around a tiny little bar stool table Basically, Mo had her phone up and, you know, you can um, follow the lyrics now on Spotify. They were just all gathered around this phone, basically just singing the songs, uh, (laughs) singing the lyrics to whatever this song was. And they were having, honestly having the best, the time of their lives. Did that song come out, Time of Your Life? I have the time of my life. There's a distinct lack of old and gold stuff that comes out of there it's all very current and new so i'm hence why i'm not joining in just yet <laughs> is it just ratchet booty yeah. what is that song I, I don't i don't think it goes back to frank sinatra for you <laughs> <laughs> so you sent us hannah Bottomman and zoe aldcroft in your stead last week do you have any feedback on um on what we did out at the lester arms they're good crack aren't they they're two very good girls I would just like to set the record straight on a few things. Um, okay. Hannah Bottman, the story she told about me giving her stick about getting up off the floor quicker, there was a lack of context to that story because it sounded like <laughs> I was being a bit harsh, but it, it wasn't. We'd basically, we'd had a meeting literally that week from our s and who had basically said like one of our new KPIs was speed off the deck and speed to reload, getting back involved in the line. So it was just really, really funny that we'd both been involved in a contact together We'd obviously got back off the ground, a new phase had happened and Bots was still basically in front of the ball. So I thought it was just quite funny and quite a telling moment just to say to her, yeah, good, good speed off the ground, mate. But she, at the time, she laughed at. So now she's retelling it as if I'm being really harsh and aggressive towards her. But um, but yeah, they're, they're the good lady, girls. The lady doth protest a lot. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> huh? She doesn't like her, her halo just dropping an inch mm, or two, does mm, she? Mm. You can say you're a, you're a badass who, who yeah. holds people to account. I mean, yeah. that's what leaders are all about. That one was funny. The referee one was correct. I did get marched back 10 metres. I'm still not over it. <laughs> <laughs> I was still right. And they know it. <laughs> How is it to be back in camp uh, with Mo? The two of you are reunited. Yeah, it's super nice. Um, obviously, just being back in camp, full stop, I think, for the both of us. It's been a little while. Probably, well, a lot longer for Mo, but um, for me as well. So it's just, yeah, it's been nice just to be back around the girls. Obviously, we both travelled up to Scotland. Um, the journey less fun but the 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 whole trip was was good fun and yeah me and Mo are actually roommates as well so we get to hang out quite a lot together which they're not a world within which um for for anyone who doesn't know this um they they bundled the red roses into a coach and then they drove nine and a half hours to Scotland is there not a world in which you could just get on the train isn't that faster uh, b- uh, sorry pardon my ignorance but I don't know these things there's a lovely train up to Edinburgh of course there is yes I've been on it yeah. myself the funny thing was and I don't know if I should tell this story or not but the funny thing was one of our players um, was struggling with illness, not COVID, but another illness that obviously she wasn't around the squad because she needed to clear her 48 hours. So we basically left on the bus from Bisham Abbey at, I think it was like one o'clock. And by by the time we'd stopped at Preston Services at about five o'clock, she had made it to Edinburgh because she had to get on a flight. So she was on a separate flight. She was already in our hotel and we were on our <laughs> first stop at Preston Services we still were looking down the barrel of about five hours on this coach. So we were all like, oh, we should have just 
got a bit closer to her and caught the bug. But yeah, that was fun. So what is the illness of the week uh, before the next game? I was going to say, are you guys all <laughs> yeah. getting sick before going to Palmer now? Is that the solution here? No, I think Palmer's the one you definitely don't want to get sick for. That's the one you want to, yeah. the, the flight you want to be on. Okay, so 57-5, that was the scoreline against Scotland. Is that what it felt like? I think it probably flattered us a bit. I'm a big sort of <laughs> Scotland fan. Like obviously, we play rugby with a lot of the girls at Lightning. Um, and obviously, having followed their journey to World Cup qualification, obviously very closely over the last 12 months or so, um, I've kind of been really rooting for them to... And obviously, they managed to achieve that, which was awesome. But but yeah, they've, they've come on a, a huge amount. Um, I think we were definitely a little bit uh, rusty, a little bit sloppy at times. Um, obviously, first hit out, sometimes you, you get that. Um, but yeah, I think we, we scored some good tries. We pulled some good things together. Obviously we're always aiming for that kind of perfection bit, which is always tough to, to get anywhere near, but we were probably a bit further off than we'd like to be in that game. Now, for anyone who hasn't been paying attention, they recently qualified for, um, the rugby world cup out in Dubai by playing in the final qualifiers tournament. Um, and they absolutely destroyed the scrums over there. It was, I mean, the video of them destroying the Colombian scrum went viral on TikTok. <laughs> it literally really? had 700,000 views at one point of them just plowing through. That sets the bar a bit. Uh, the forwards must have been chomping to get stuck in. If I ever needed any more confirmation that I did not want to be a forward, that video is it. Um, yeah, I mean, fair play to them. <laughs> Uh, it's obviously something they've they've been working incredibly hard on. Um, CB and Leia, the two of their props that often start for them, actually play their rugby in Loughborough. So know those guys quite well, and they are very strong girls. So yeah, I mean, I think the the forwards were definitely up for that challenge because they knew it was was coming. I think that's like all forwards, they kind of get excited about that. They want to roll their sleeves up and, and really test themselves against that sort of stuff. But yeah, I think the set piece was was solid from both sides. To be fair, um, not that. I know a huge amount about it. Yeah, I, I think just from our point of view, it's just good to get out of the blocks, get a win, get the bonus point um, and and have things to look at moving into the, to next week. 19 wins in a row. 19. That's, nice. That's a number. It is a number. That's for certain. Yeah, it's cool. Does it we, feel heavy? No, I think it's, it's a huge opportunity for us because there's quite a, a lot of landmarks and I, I'm not going to be able to list them all off for you, but... Um, I think by every win we get, we overtake somebody, either a men's biggest winning streak or an England men's winning streak or the ultimate winning streak once you get a few more a few more up there. So all of those things are, are somewhat in touching distance. And as, as this squad that obviously has been building for a couple of years and is building towards the World Cup, it's quite an exciting thing to be able to, to see those things as um, achievable um, and things that actually will kind of, Put this team down in history obviously we want to go down in history for, for winning the world cup in 2022 but as well there's there's some pretty cool records that you know have the potential to be broken by us as well i loved um brian moore on comms just going hmm, do you know these scotland girls are really talented if only the scotland rugby union would give them contracts i think the reason they don't have contracts is scotland just doesn't want to give it to them which is he never likes to be controversial. Though, I mean, does he, Ryan? gosh, just going in straight <laughs> on the nose right. there. I don't think there's any reason. Mm. It's just so bizarre to let um, another home nation uh, plus France have contracts mm. and then expect to compete. Uh, I mean, it's great that obviously Scotland have got into the the, the Rugby World Cup this this autumn. But how much better could they be if they're spending time together? Mm. Yeah, I think, you know, for the Welsh Welsh girls, I think there's twelve is their full time. Mm. But so how do you train with just twelve full time? It's like, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> how do you do that? It doesn't make sense. You know, they, you, they, it's talk about low hanging fruit, and if you can, if you can find a way, even, even if it's it's you know, because there's some on retainers in Wales, right? Mm. Even if it's just a retainer. So you can maybe have one extra day off a week and you can, if you can double the training load, you yeah. will see the skill sets and everything else, the unity go through the roof. Yeah. It's not, it's not rocket science. The more time you spend together, the better you get as a team. Full stop. Full stop. There you go. It's as complicated and as simple as that. Um, let's talk about the players, the individuals who stood out. Um, I loved Sarah Orchard on, on commentary, <laughs> shouting out, behave, Abby Dow. 
um, or Abby Wow, as uh, <laughs> Anna Bottoman said, she's uh, she is colloquially known. Um, who did you love uh, watching Smashing It Up? Um, Rolly did really well for for Scotland as well. Yeah. Abby Dow isn't the biggest fan of Abby Wow, but it's definitely not stopping us calling it her. <laughs> but yeah, she's she's always she's always mega. I I'm gonna throw it out there. I think she's probably the best winger in the world right now. She's unbelievable when you give her and she probably didn't have that many opportunities at the weekend, but the one she did have, she mm. certainly took. Um obviously Marley Packer oh. had a mega game. Um she on her eightieth cap scored three tries. Her stats were unbelievable in terms of carries, tackles. I don't think she missed a tackle either. Um, she's somebody who, you know, despite being similar age to me, and therefore some people suggest we're in our twilight years. Um, actually, she's she's <laughs> unbelievable. Her desire to train and Mike. be better, and the competitiveness she shows when she's playing, like she that girl is a a game player, um, and she's been yeah she's been unbelievable. But as you say, some of the, the Scottish girls as well really stood up. Um, Emma Wassell's been Wassell. Emma Wassell's been awesome all year for for Loughborough. And I thought she was very good again, and Chloe Rowley as well. And at the back, she had a lot of bouncing balls to deal with, but she's always making meters. So yeah, I was going to say Pat Packer would be classed in America as she having a double double because I think she was twenty two tackles or something, and then she had over ten. She was twelve or fourteen carries as well. So double digits on double stats. She's just double double, like the hardest worker out there. And she wasn't in my team. Well, let that be there a lesson go. to you. See, you I did. I me, just going back to Abby. Some advice, Mike. I, I think I can pull up my uh, my WhatsApps to find that I did, but then someone might have pretty. I'm not allowed to. I'm such a goody two shoes. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, that was no. <laughs> no, no. You did. You did. Hold on a minute. You Hold gave, on you, a minute. Did, I'll take it back. I'll take it back. I'll oh, take it back. She's got the microphone she, in the hand. She she's was really... waving at her. She did give me. I was. I was more like, who from the other teams are? Uh, do you think could pop up? And they're also good kickers. <laughs> All about craving the points. But going on to uh, just back to Abby Dow. Is, is she is a you can just see what a phenomenal athlete she is. You know, as soon as she breaks that line, was that would would you take that as a no look pass, Skaz, or was that was there a little movement of the eyes because it sort of looks somewhere in between? What are you taking? I reckon like a half look pass. I can't remember to be honest. I'm terrible at re- remembering things <laughs> like that. But I, I, I and because it was from a scrum, and we were like, right, if we just go hard and square, we're probably going to get the edge away. And then it, the scrum turned into a free kick. So then that all slowed down a bit. Sunter tapped it. She turned the wrong way. So by the time the ball came, it was all a bit slow. So I was like, I don't think this space is going to be here anymore. And I just saw a flicker of Rona just turn in a little bit. So I thought, I'll give Abby, a, give her a chance. And as I say, she needs less than half a chance, that girl, and she will take it. So, yeah, she made my little half look, no pass, whatever. Look like <laughs> <it>. <laughs> you took it, yeah, as the assist, uh, the maker. the yeah, 100%. <laughs> as any good centre does, by the way. Yeah, yeah. You put in a, a solid 60 minutes. Um, how is that conditioning holding out? With well, How sore was it afterwards? The body's all right. Um, yeah, it wasn't too bad, I think, the what I actually got through in in the game was probably not as many contacts as, as some people. So from that point of view, I was all right. Um, I did start cramping up after 60 minutes, um, which I suppose is, is kind of expected. Um, but yeah, so I, I was glad, really glad to get 60, to be honest. Um, obviously I did, going into the game, you never quite know what, what you will get and what you'll be able to get through. Um, but when I saw the clock was 60 and I was coming off, I was pretty happy with that. Um, I'll take that and yeah, hopefully move on to, to some of the other games. You hadn't noticed that you'd played past half time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had, but after that, after that, there was, I only noticed, I couldn't find the clock for ages. Um, and then I saw it, it was down in the bottom corner and it was actually enormous how I'd missed it the entire game. I've absolutely no idea, but. Um, <laughs> only there to you. <laughs> to kick those conversions, just yeah. adding uh, to the tally. So Mo was on water duty. So she was playing the Rassi Erasmus of the team. Did she have a lot to say? She was mega. She's a bit concerned she's done too good a job and she might not actually be able to play again. <laughs> but did you see her? She, did you see her little montage? Liam, our, um, 
our media guy put her a little montage together of water carrier. And I've never seen anyone be made a water carrier montage before. So she must have done a really, really good job. But um, yeah, no, it's so good, isn't it? Like you, you think about what messages come on and what needs communicated. You need somebody that, that understands those messages and mo- will certainly understand them, interpret them, and then almost like read the room when she gets there. Um, because sometimes those messages might have been already picked up by players or the mood's high or the mood's low or it's this or it's that. And, and that's actually a really important part of... of bringing on messages as well you can't just run on and bark exactly what the coach has said you've got to do a little bit of interpreting and filtering as well and she did a bit of interpreting for us at home at halftime just trotting over to the tv position having a few words with you know Ugo. she loves to chat that girl Ooh, though, she? sheesh i mean she was just loves it absolutely brilliant um so the the big question and marley actually referred to it in her post-match interview she said i want to go to the world cup And that raised the question in my mind, how many players, how tight is the competition? Do we know uh, how many spots there will be on the plane to the land of the long white cloud, Aotearoa? As far as I'm aware, it's not been 100% confirmed, but I could be wrong. Um, I think they're toying between obviously bigger numbers with COVID dramas um, and obviously making sure that that hopefully then doesn't actually impact any squad. Um, or whether you just kind of, I think it's 30 normally, so whether you just crack on with that. There's there's 36 being banded about, which is obviously a, a huge amount of of people, really. You think we've, we've got 30 contracted players. Obviously, we've got quite a lot in the squad at the moment that aren't contracted. So it gives a lot of people a really good shot. But at the same time, if you, you start looking at picking 23 for a match day, the, the squad at the moment is just nuts. And obviously, you had bots and... Zoe or Croft on the other day because they were rehabbing, Amy Kane's rehabbing, all of those guys were hoping to get back at some point. Zoe Harrison wasn't playing this weekend because she had a, a little niggle. So the depth in the squad at the moment is kind of scary, but at the same time, amazing for us in terms of the, the quality of, of people and the depth that we've got. Brilliant. That's exciting. So if you are in New Zealand and you are listening to this, uh, you'll, you'll be able to see um, potentially a, a massive a variety of, of England players in action down there. Speaking of fans, the match in Edinburgh attracted nearly 4,000 people. It was lovely to see those stands full because I know when Edinburgh have been playing in the URC, it's been pretty sparse. I know I worked on a game there at the start of the year when they still weren't allowed any fans. Um, and then in Ireland, they also had a record, what was it, 6,113 people going to watch uh, the Irish woman um, against Wales. So it's amazing to have all the hype in the lead up to the tournament and then to see people actually come through and support turning out um, and, and you, you'd kind of love to see that continue now that it goes to new venues this weekend um, in Parma and in Cardiff. Yeah, it's so good. Um, I think obviously last time we played in Scotland, it was definitely different conditions and it was during COVID and we'd had a change of venue and all that sort of stuff. <laughs> that was the storm was, that came in. Oh, it was unbelievable. Never been so cold in my entire life. And then this weekend I was almost too hot. So we had to be a bit careful about mm. what we were wishing for. But um, yeah, like just stood waiting for the, the kickoff of the game. They were singing, I, I don't know the name of the song, but it's the one, where, it's a Scottish song. It says, I'll take the high road, you take the low road, something like that. And they were singing it. Everyone was singing it. And it was just such a cool moment because you just, I, I personally just stood, had a little look around, took it all in. Like you, there's a sea of um, white England shirts as much as there was Scottish shirts. Um, and all those people were there to support us. They weren't there because they'd watched a men's game and they were um, just hanging around a bit. They were there because they actually wanted to come and support us. And I think that's that was awesome. The record crowd in Ireland was amazing as well. Um, obviously, France always get unbelievable numbers waving their flags over there that was so good to see so yeah I think we've we've set a, a really good start point for the tournament and um, hopefully that can continue and, and get better as the games kind of go on and, and places are, are being jostled for. Jeez how impressive was that France game that venue is lovely the fans were brilliant the French team are phenomenal. I, I, went, I went down to Grenoble in my in a brief stint where I thought I might move abroad oh. um but uh, the point Zara had 
I think she had 14 horses. So when oh. I brought that up, it was like, maybe, maybe we can't accommodate that. Um, 14 <laughs> horses <laughs> all the way out of uh, France. Yeah. And uh, well, what's the budget on that? Yeah. Uh, okay. Basically, you're not worth it. Me, puts me moving four cats into perspective. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, pit, the pitch is. It's fantastic. The stadium, mm. mount, mountains in the background. You're half an hour from skiing. I'm like, yes, please. If you want to play somewhere, mm. can we go there, please? And brilliant to to see them out. Uh, France are now second in the table. So that final weekend encounter is setting up really nicely, really meaty. Do you want me to comment on that? We don't talk about it. <laughs> can we leave that in? We are definitely leave leaving that, that in. in. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we'll talk. Well, at least it's in Bayonne, a beautiful rugby hotbed. There's going to be so many fans down there. Mm. You can have a little bit of a rest day, go to the mm-hmm. beach, get a little bit, and it's got a good nightlife. So, we, well, when you win, uh, I'm sure there'll be a, quite a night. Oh, we don't talk about it, though. We, we don't, don't talk, talk about, about it, it, remember? Yeah, we don't talk we about don't it. We don't talk about it. Um, okay, can we talk about Wales? Can we talk about <laughs> Wales? Wales will be playing in front of Absolutely. their home crowd this weekend. And they are putting out uh, a big call to action to all fans within reach of Cardiff, which basically is most, you know, of the home nations. Come on, go through, go <laughs> well, support de- Wales. Definitely the whole of the rugby hotbed of the southwest. Yes. Nip across. Now it's free to get across the bridge. They don't even charge you to get in there. Anymore, no so. excuses, mate. No excuses. So Wales, uh, Scotland, um, Hannah Jones was amazing. Um, many people thought that it might be a bit soon to start going, ooh, will the contracts have, have an impact? Will it make a difference? Uh, do you think that it's lit, you know, like a fire of determination and uh, the culture seems to be really good there? Yeah, look, you're, you're, it's, all, it's obviously hard to say whether them spending more time together has made a difference. It, you would suggest it would be too soon to, to really see that. But at the same time, just a change in confidence in the group. That group now knows that they are being supported. They know that the union has their back. They know that, you know, they they don't have to worry about trudging back to work on a Monday morning or for the majority of them, obviously. Um, So things like that, just just change your mentality towards um, the game and how you're you're, um, going about your business and stuff. So it was a massive win for them um, away from home against an island side that actually, you know, they looked really, really good, I thought. so yeah, a, a massive game for them coming back home this weekend. Everything they've been through on the back of a win, I think it's something that, yeah, definitely if you're um, a supporter nearby, definitely get down there and, and show them some love for sure. Got to. Got to. Get out there and support. So uh, we're obviously um, Team England uh, against Italy and I'm going France over Ireland. But Mike Tyndall, let's hear your prediction <laughs> For Wales v Scotland. I would say I, I'm actually going to stick with Wales here. I think obviously they've got quite a nice little bat line that they've got going in, in there. Now, my one thing Scotland do have is, and I agree with what Scouts was saying, there's a few good performances in that Scotland pack. So it's going to be how the Welsh pack can stand up to that. But I think they've got game breakers throughout that bat line. Obviously, we've had um, Jasmine on the uh, Joyce on the show before and she's obviously a little bit of a live wire that one and was at the weekend again so I think they I'm going to stick with the home win on this actually I'm going to I'm going to throw that out there don't know whether anyone agrees with me or not but that's where I'm going I reckon Scotland might knock them over I also Uh. feel a I feel a Scotland upset coming Next up, we welcome to the good, the scars and the rugby, Victoria Rush. She's a producer and a filmmaker, a senior producer at Virgin Media and O2, a rugby player at Richmond Rugby Club, a club with storied history. And she's the director and executive producer of a new film that if you have not watched, you should now line up on Amazon Prime to watch next. It's called no woman, no try. Welcome to the show, Victoria. Thanks for having me. That may be the longest introduction I have ever had. <laughs> Aww. Should, we, should you, we go back and do it again and make it longer? I'm well, sure we I was, I was going to say, I can add a few lines to yeah. that. Well, you're used to dealing with James Haskell and, yeah. <laughs> and, and Emily Scarra, who, you know, you have to write an essay, write, read an essay. Hey, don't you dare yeah. drag me yeah, into I'm sure his you can make a few things up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Didn't see you there. Sorry. <laughs> Forgot you were here. <laughs> So you have been doing so much press, so much PR, so many interviews over the last week. What's the first question everyone asks? I think, where did it come from? So why did you start doing it? And for me, it was always about 
helping inspire the next generation of kids to not feel the way I did when I was growing up. I remember trying to go to the gym. This is like the clearest memory I have going to the gym at 17 or so. And the boys used to tell me it wasn't the space for me. I wasn't allowed to be there. Girls don't belong in the gym, that kind of thing. Yeah, you have to be a skinny girl, but you can't do it by exercise. Um, and I thought that kids were, I guess I thought kids were probably better than we are somehow, but it turned out I was wrong. Um, and the I Am Enough movement and the I Care movements were really kind of clear points in time that showed us that, uh, that people with kids, especially girls, were being bullied. Women were being bullied just for going to the gym or having muscles, which I think is absurd in, in every case. So it, for me, it was just about changing that perspective and, and hoping that s maybe just one girl grew up knowing she could be whoever she wanted to be. And that was how it all began. It's a real weird, weird concept for me. And I, I got this whilst watching, uh, I watched it today, is I, I don't look at women and ever judge anyone who's in the gym or I don't say you shouldn't be here whether it's because I you know when I was at Bath we trained up at the university gym and obviously we we had the likes of Amy Williams or um you know all training in the same place same time or whether it's because we're an athlete and we actually want people to be able to train or I, I really that was one of the things that sort of I came away watching today with a bit of frustration that how dare anyone say any anything about being in the gym and and let's say even if you're doing it because you're not happy with what you've got right now, why would you possibly say that to someone to actually demotivate them mm. and not allow them to even better themselves? It's the most ridiculous thing. I, I just can't, I can't understand it. I actually quite, I like it when girls get into training because they're so, because one thing, women are unbelievably motivated and men can learn a lot from that because they are. Um, and I, I love it when, you know, they put themselves out there. You know, you talk about the girls and and the fact that they have to work jobs and then go training and, and then and do everything and they do it and they still have time to know that they need to grow the game and they need to be out there. And I think it's it's people need to look at it from a, a different slant and look yeah. at it in the way it's meant and it's quite inspiring. Well, we've always known you're an ally. You're married to someone who's a, you know, <laughs> a, a yeah. bit of an athlete if someone's, herself. <laughs> if someone's quite focused, <laughs> yeah. that is what I would say my wife is. Yeah. Uh, and as I say, she she got way more medals than me, so I have to respect that. <laughs> On the topic of really inspirational women, though, how did you select the amazing line of, of women that we get to know in No Woman, No Try? If you haven't watched it, um, you should. But we won't be giving too much of it away. But Steph Evans and Shauna Brown and Zainab Alima, um, all three of them particularly, are just so remarkable. Um, but there are many remarkable women in rugby. And, it, uh, you know, it's interesting to me, having watched it now, looking back on it, going, you were, you were clearly there to tell certain stories and to get a message across. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of the stories we didn't know until we were filming. Steph's story, and I won't give it away, about when she was younger, I had no idea we were going to get to until it happened, which is why you see us sort of break the moment. Uh, because that's actually what happened. Um, but I knew that I wanted people who could represent more than I could represent. Um, Shauna, I mean, she's an incredibly iconic woman anyway. Um, and I very much hoped she'd say yes. The truth is, and she has already dropped this before, I basically DM'd her and was just like, hey, I'm making a film, do you want to be involved? And she's like, who's this weirdo I've never spoken to before? Um, but she got it. She got why I was passionate about it and everything was said. Um, Z, the, the truth is there are very few people that look like Z in rugby and, and how do we make that different? Well, we have to put her in a position where she can be seen to help inspire people. I cannot inspire a Muslim woman to see an opportunity for herself because I am not a Muslim woman. And I was like, how can we make that change? Steph has a wonderful story um, and, and what she's been through is amazing. So for me, it was all about how can we help represent as many people into the game as possible? You know, and Ugo again, you can't have men in the conversation um, if they can't see themselves there. And he represents that, you know, and that was, that was fantastic to have him um, equally. I still think I couldn't believe he just said yes. There were no questions, I don't think, from him at all. Just, where, where do you want me? And um, that, it's one of the, I've had a lot of messages already from men saying, my, my perception has been positively changed. And, and dad saying, I'm so excited to watch this with my daughter and I'm so sad that this is what she's got to go through, but I can't believe she can now see this in front of her. And it's just, yeah, it's been an incredible 
experience the last couple of days. I'm exhausted, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, I think that's that's the point, though, isn't it? That obviously, hopefully, we're trying to get to is that a father doesn't have to worry that his daughter is going to have to go through that. Um, for me, that's that's a huge part of it. That should never, ever be a worry. I think, obviously, Mike's spoken of his experiences or his thoughts about it, and that's brilliant. But unfortunately, there are a lot of people that, that don't see it through Mike's eyes. But I think my definite hope is, and I think the, the film goes a, a long way to hopefully improving that is that a father should never have to worry what his daughter might have to go through just because she plays rugby or plays sport or wants to be physically active or any of those things. It was so beautiful. I was um, at a screening of No Woman No Try at Richmond uh, Rugby Club on Friday night and there were so many um, young girls who play in their age group teams and you know people from kind of all walks of life who are involved with the club and then there was one family who are not involved with the club they just came because they wanted to come to the screening. And it was a dad and a mom and two girls. And at the end of the screening, we did a little few questions. And then I said, okay, does anyone on the floor have any questions? And this dad literally basically shot up, he stuck his hand in the air. And he said something that touched all of us. Like we all spoke about it afterwards. And he got an absolute resounding round of applause he said, my daughter is, how old is she? What, like, like 11 or something. Yeah. yeah. And um, we're an Indian family. And I wanted, we could watch this at home, but I wanted to bring my daughter down here tonight to see all of you, see Zainab Aluma, and to see Steph Evans and Victoria and see all the women around here and see that it is possible for her and that there are different ways of being a rugby player. And just because at this stage, she doesn't have someone that she can hold on to, there are different ways of being in, within the sport. And he was so beautifully passionate about the fact that his daughter, he believed, could do anything. There was absolutely no limit to what she could achieve. What does it mean to you when people like that come out who say, I'm not even here for Richmond Rugby Club? Yeah, that was a beautiful moment. I think everyone was just like proudest dad of the year award. Like he had her stand up and he was like, this is my daughter. And everyone gave him the biggest round of applause. He was so proud of her. Um, and yeah, that kind of moment is what it was all about. It just for, for me, it was if like one person gets it, one person understands what we're trying to achieve. It's amazing to, to have all these messages. I, I'm not a professional athlete. I do not get thousands of messages a weekend after a game. I'm not used to this kind of this kind of thing. And I'm trying to reply to every single person that sends me a story or a thank you or whatever it is. Cause it's really important to me that anyone who sees it feels involved. Cause it was all about individual people. Like the, the international side is what the top 10, 1% of the game, you know, everybody else is real day to day people who play grassroots rugby in the mud on the weekends. And, um, yeah, to see him so proud of her already before she's, you know, she's 11 and only probably only just started playing. And that was, um, yeah, just incredible. I'm conscious of the fact that we've all now seen it. Um, so for someone who's listening or watching this, um, who hasn't even seen the trailer, how do you pitch this? How do you, what do you tell people before, without giving too much of it away? What is it about? Uh, very simply, it's not a rugby story. It's a human story. And that's what I think has been the most relatable thing. I've had quite a few guys message to say I was apprehensive of what I was about to watch and if anything I couldn't be more inspired to find out how I can be part of the change and that's you know that's just incredible and it's it's real life stories of what women go through whether it's in sport or in rugby or in in an office I know the, the realities of these experiences aren't aren't just in rugby they transcend all of that and that's what I always hoped it would kind of cover um, so yeah, it's it's about understanding the real lived experiences of women in our world, um, and and hopefully how everyone could can see how they can be part of that change. A lot of us saw the I am enough movement, which was you posting photos of yourself and different kits, um, and and uh, there was a lot of talk around women's bodies, and you know, kind of we all went through lockdown and looked at our life and our choices and kind of how we were spending our time. Um, and but different people did different things. Some people baked banana bread. You um, at that stage were already deep within this process because a lot of people see things that are wrong in the sporting world. We talk about it. 
well, me, I predominantly talk about things. That's how I participate. You saw this and went, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to make a documentary. Have I ever made a documentary before? Mm, no. Have I got funding for this documentary? No. <laughs> Have I? Do I even know the people I want to interview? No. No. no okay, when you kind of put it like that, it does, <laughs> uh, it does all feel a bit ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I should have just paid banana bread. No, I shouldn't. I'm really, I'm really glad I did it. I guess there's that analogy of one step at a time. Don't focus on what's you know ahead of you, but mm. just focus on the one thing you can control and the one thing you can change. I don't think it's ever played out quite so clearly for me in my life. I had lots of people, and I haven't really said this before. I had lots of people, men and women in the industry, tell me it wasn't possible, it couldn't be done. Not that necessarily the message wasn't worth sharing, but it just in film it it couldn't be done. There isn't money in it, all that kind of thing. And oh, there isn't money in it. I'll give you that. But it, I couldn't see what they could see. I hadn't done it before. They could see all these hurdles that would probably come at me. And they're right. I had all these hurdles. But I, because I had no idea what could possibly go wrong, I just kept going one bit at a time. And I was like, okay, thank you. Professional opinion. Completely appreciate it. I'm just going to keep going and, and see where we get to. Um, and then I think it was maybe two weeks ago, I sort of almost turned around physically turned around and kind of looked down that hill on that mountain and was like oh right shit sorry I don't know if I'm allowed to say that yeah. all right Hask is on this kind of stuff yeah, I can yeah, pretty much yeah. say anything right yeah. uh, I kind of, and I was like I have, I've, done, I've done it how did I do how have I, how on earth have I done that and the, the truth is I have a full-time job and I, I was playing rugby and I don't really know where I slept and ate and my other half has to, he has made sure I basically lived and breathed through the entire <laughs> thing and, and slept and ate. Um, but yeah, it was, I guess it just, like I said earlier, it really pulled on me from when I was a kid. And that for me was like, right, I've got to do something about this no matter what it takes. And where? From a women's rugby point of view, and I'm sure Shauna would have said it. I can't speak for the other guys, so I don't know them as well, but certainly just like a thank you because I think in our sport, we need people to be the first to do something we need people to put their head above the parapet a little bit and kind of take a risk seemingly sometimes to actually showcase these things we've seen the power that um documentaries series things like that especially sporting ones at the moment are so popular people love them i've no interest in cheer cheerleading never wanted to do it never done it before in my life cheer absolutely hooked on it and it's just the power that um, something that is done so well and put on a platform like Amazon Prime can can give to a sport and a world and a different world and showcase it to so many people. So, yeah, just while I wanted to jump in, just I think on behalf of a lot of us that have been in the game a long time, thank you for giving us that stage. Thank you. Uh, do you know what that means in the world, to be honest? Because um, I haven't really spoken to many people about it in really in the game. So thank you, uh, really. And, and you're, you're bang on with that about documentaries and films. Like there's one that won the Oscar last night. It's a short 22 minute doc on the first black woman in basketball. Right? Yes. It won an Oscar. And the guy stood up and said, um, uh, if anyone tells you there's no interest in women's sport, you can tell them they're wrong. And I was like, finally, somebody has taken us all the way, all the way to Hollywood and, and actually said it out loud. And it's true. You can't argue with that. If you want, I've got the numbers, if you want the numbers, but the truth is people who, watch rugby watch films mm. so why wouldn't they want to watch a film about yeah. women's rugby or any rugby you know and and I think um well for me anyway hopefully this is the first of many Sport, yeah. sports people love sport they'll yeah. watch anything yeah that one is called the queen of basketball go watch it if you haven't heard of it Shaquille O'Neal and uh, Steph Curry were the exec producers and they've promoted this project and they won an Oscar with it which shows you that it can both be activism but also just really good entertainment, which is powerful. So for someone who works in the business of making content, which is what I do every day, where did this start? How do you start making a documentary? I can only speak from doing this once. So, you know, one rodeo. But I think if you don't know why you're doing it, you're not going to get very far. If you're just doing it to make a film, you're just doing it to be famous, you're just doing it to be rich, you're not going to get very far. You're just going to try and make anything and that'll never work. You've got to care deeply about what it is you want to make because there's a lot of people that will tell you it can't be done. Um, and when you're starting out, no one wants to give you any money, which makes it even harder to do. So you've got to find people who believe in in what you're trying to say and that's basically why I, what I did. I just went and found Ben and Jack who 
I will be forever in debt to. They they believed in everything I wanted to say. They filmed it. They edited it. They they helped create the idea into something that's real. Um, and then again, you know, everyone that's in it obviously said yes. Um, but there were plenty of people who couldn't say yes. Who were told they weren't allowed to be in it. Um, which I think is incredibly sad. You know, that's that's unions stopping their players telling their story. They must have something to hide. I'll worry about that another day. It's another film in the making. Um, but yeah, you've got to care about it a lot and and find the people that want to be involved. I think for me that was that was it. And then um, at every stage, I, I I wouldn't let anyone take part unless they truly believed in it. You know, and there were people on the kind of production side of things I had to walk away from because it was all about the money and all about the control. And as soon as, you know, a brand or anybody else got involved, you'd lose that and it would become another brand message or a controlled message. So, yeah, just um, if you really believe in what you're doing, just keep going no matter what. Don't stop because it will it will happen eventually. And when it does, you'll be really surprised about how far you can come. What's, your, what's, the, what's the dream of where it's going to get to, how many people it's going to get to? Is it... Is it enough if it changes one person's yes, perception? Yes, 100%. Or, you know, is it... But I don't think it will stop there. I think it'll swell. I think what's mm. going on, what Emily's uh, at the forefront of, along with Shauna and, and all the other women, it, is they're on the... We've just talked about whether they're, on, they're at the bottom of a wave and they're only going up at the moment. So mm. I think it's perfectly timed. Um, obviously, you have to show that diversity because ultimately rugby, one thing it's been... Uh, what, whether it be male or female is, is accused of as not being diverse enough. Um, so I think it, it was important that that diversity comes across because even though people sort of sometimes scoff at it, if you, if you see it, you believe it, it, I think it still rings true for a lot of people. So I think that, that select, sort of selection process is, is hitting the people that, that, that need it the most, really. And I, th- I, think, I think it's only a good thing. I mm. think it, it can only get better. It can only... Uh, help the the women's game explode more we've talked about it on the on the good the bad the rugby this week in terms of i think there's a huge change going to come because but it, mm. it does take businesses uh, uh, to actually go put their money where their mouth is and mm. you know t- t- brands like allianz who've, who've stepped up and put the 15s in it takes other because it's going to take more money if you want people to be all if you want everyone to be professional it's going to take more brands it's going to take more money coming into the game you know, it's great that the Six Nations is now sitting in its own time period. It's on it's on terrestrial TV. It's just it's the start of something that can, you know, you look at women's American sports, whether it be football, soccer, who for years they won Olympic golds. Men didn't do that, but yet the men the men traveled in men traveled in private jets and they were riding coach. You mm. know, Scars last week was on a bus to Edinburgh. For nine wouldn't, hours. Yeah, wouldn't nine Hours. Well, the nine and a half just because <laughs> <laughs> you know you know when you're <laughs> half an hour away that half an hour is the biggest pain in the hole ever <laughs> so let's talk about what we want to see change because you've dug around you've been rooting around women's rugby <laughs> all over this country you've been speaking to people both on camera and off camera you've been digging <laughs> And you have the ability to see things that no one else uh, thinks is possible. So with your vision and the level of ambition that you have and the crazy things that you seem to be able to push pull off, <laughs> where are the big things that need to be addressed first? The big things. I think for me, if we solve access and visibility and funding so everything always falls around those pillars the same for men's sport the same for women's sport without those three things you can't you literally can't do anything they're the backbone of every sport um access is making sure girls across the country can choose between playing what is known as a feminine sport feminine sports like netball <laughs> really drive me nuts netball hockey rounders and all that kind of stuff um and they can choose to play football or rugby or cricket if they want to because they're not feminine or masculine sports are just different I used to get pulled up in netball all the time stop being so aggressive stop being so physical it's a non-contact sport I don't understand never understood non-contact sports I was a goalkeeper in hockey it's the closest you could get to running into people and then somebody threw me a rugby ball and I was like oh, I get it this is what I'm supposed to do you know, so without, without that level of access you've got girls all over the world believing they don't belong here mm. because they, they don't fit into this ridiculous mould we've given them 
visibility, you know, the things like the film, I really hope are a huge part of changing that. And that's the point of it. You know, you, you, you fall in love with the characters. Shauna's brilliant on camera and she's, she's funny and she's engaging. And because you see that, people maybe that maybe wouldn't have seen her will now go and watch her games. That's a totally different viewership you wouldn't have had before. Um, and then obviously, like you've just said, you know, like the, the funding. Without the money, we can't do anything. You can't commit to being professional. You have your contracts, you have them taken away, you get given them back. Where do you fall in a career? Are, are women supposed to just give up their lives and hope that somebody might just pay them to do a sport when men are paid, not necessarily all in rugby, but men can be paid millions and millions to play a sport? Let's talk about money. So Let's. a lot of the argument against women's rugby being given more prominence, more airtime, more space, more attention, is that it's just not financially viable. What men's sport is financially viable? Can somebody somebody give me one? F find me one. But 20, 30, 40 years of investment before you get a turnaround profit. Look at football. Find me a profit. Find me a profit in any premiership football team. They all owe, they owe their owners millions, billions of pounds, and that's called self-investment and profit. I'm sorry, but that's the biggest lie. Next to men aren't emotional. <laughs> <laughs> There's your sound bite. Whoops. Yeah. Um, but but for me, that's it, it's just not true. <laughs> Emily is passing <laughs> out. Got, got scars. <laughs> scars is gasping for air. No, I enjoyed that one. I just I heard funding and I was going to turn my camera off, but I, I'm happy you've cracked on. <laughs> I get what you're saying. The, the biggest thing is more, I think, first and foremost, is more people going, I think what, you can pull out stats on where the game's going, we, the participation of, of how many women are now starting to play the sport and where it's going, and they'll, they'll be astronomically through the roof. It, but for a, you've got to think how businesses think and whether that's right or wrong, it's, that's how they think is it's, it's, and it's how marketable is it how many people are following whoever so, how are we doing so that do you have a question on that so an example I probably don't have the answer no no, no 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 <laughs> but an example of that is um, the, 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 the the like dwell time of, of men watching football on Sky Sports and the equivalent dwell time of men and women watching netball on Sky Sports is something like 22 minutes for men's football and 37 minutes for women's netball if you're talking about the numbers and the viewership yeah. and, and the amount of time people are watching TV, well, people are actually spending more time watching the netball than they are the football. So we're, if we're really going to call out numbers, we're going to have to call them out evenly. And and yes, there will be something about the, the baseline audience of men's football or men's rugby is bigger, but you've never appealed to women's, women's rugby. So, so the audience isn't there. You've never given them a product. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's women's rugby either because women and men are interested in both but if you've never given them a product yep. that they're interested in why would why would they be there no I, I, I fully agree with you I you know it's it's how you then set it up I mean I've got loads of thoughts about this and I, I've talked that wasn't me disagreeing with you either no, by no, the way it, well no, no but that, I, I'm just going to put it in layman's terms it, it, it's 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 going to be someone taking the push it's, it's going to be someone taking the jump obviously it started with Tyrrell you know and then Allianz have taken that on and Allianz are getting a lot TikTok have now come to the table they see the stories that the women have and, and what's out there and they see the potential there because there are huge characters you know everyone mm. every rugby player we've had on uh, from Meg Jones to to Shauna to Hannah last last week at the live show, <laughs> you know whether it be Packer, who, whoever it might be, there are characters and stories within that. Plus, their stories are made even better because they're not straight out of an academy who's gone into another thing. They 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 it it reminds me of '96, you know, mm -hmm. before the boys w went professional. It's the same thing. It wasn't easy. It, mm. it, it was you were working by day, and it's come back, and that creates the characters. You know, every 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 character that is now dismissed that you can't have in in professional male male rugby or male sport, you can't have a character now because they've got to be a role model. You've got to be this, but why can't a character be a role model? Mm. Yeah, you've got flaws and you've got bits and you've got other bits going on, but why can't they still be these role models? Uh, it's how do you get? Uh, it's going to take brave brands yeah. who yeah. say they support and they'll they'll do bits and pieces, but supporting at the level that it needs to because I, I feel that. Every player in the Premier, the Allianz Premier 15 should be pro, and every person who plays for their country should be pro. Now, that that in a realistic world yeah. is not is not possible, but I think it is possible for home nations teams and France. So I think I, that's like the basic entry point, isn't yeah. it? If you're playing for your country, you should be paid yeah, yeah. A, a, a living Something. salary. Yeah, 
Like literally, you don't even have to be a millionaire, but you have to be able to earn money to play for your country. There I'm is keen one on being a millionaire. In, well, <laughs> millionaire. Yeah, fair. Yes. Yeah, me I too. I want to be a billionaire. <laughs> can we? Can so we? Bad. Join you on your yacht um, in the mid. Yes, <laughs> I'll buy one with you. If, if you I, I can't hard. believe you're taking a pay cut, Scas. <laughs> I know, unbelievable. The one brand story in a woman I try that I absolutely love is the example of Canterbury, who um, made a bit of a boo boo. When was that? August 2020. Was it that recent? Yeah, that was, the movement was a couple of weeks later. Maybe oh, my later. goodness. It feels like so long ago. Where they, Lockdown for they, you. Yeah, they put out the new Irish jersey and the, men, uh, the men's jersey was modelled by players and the women's jersey was modelled by random models. 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 They're even better. They uh, superimposed the kit onto the models. Bodies, So yes. they didn't even do the shoot with the models. They could have actually just chosen different photos yeah. of the players and eradicated this entire thing. But, you know, I wouldn't be here and there wouldn't be no no try. So, yeah. I, so I'll take what we can get. But. <laughs> but also props to them for then going, this was probably not a smart thing to do because look at how the internet is now dragging us. And instead of scuttling away and going, we'll just make money out of men forever and ever more, they did what? They put their hands up, admitted to fault, and and actually supported the movement. Get me wrong, I did warn them. I did send them a message. I was like, look, you know, you are not the first brand, and you probably won't be the last, and you are going to get caught in this crossfire quite heavily, I could imagine. So I'm giving you a heads up. This is happening, um, basically, whether you like it or not. So sorry about that. Um, but they were like, right, okay, good. We'll, we'll commit to it. And they came out with like three changes or something. One of them was to make sure that there's always men and women in their photo shoots. And it sounds super simple when you kind of put it like that. But if the decision is an intern or an exec who's been out of uni a year and they don't know any better... That, you know, it's it's a small mistake. It could be a small mistake, but it's this huge brand moment they'll forever live by. You would you would, you would say I'd probably say it's the other way. Someone coming out of uni wouldn't make that mistake. Yeah, it's probably someone well, who's yeah. been yeah. in job yeah. for a long time. Well, I just say it's got to come down to culture, right? Inside your business, if you if your leaders aren't telling everybody that this is how you work, mm. then someone is going to make that mistake, and whether they are junior or senior. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think. You know, we're 18 months down the line now and, and Canterbury have committed to change and have actually made change. So, And they them. now sponsor women who play rugby, which is great. They do. With, yeah, three ambassadors and Z and Ellie Kildun. So it's a huge change. Yeah. And that's the stuff we love to see. So that's why I mentioned them because we talk about the fact that we want brands to come in and join the party. So when they do the way they have done that, which I think is really brave and strong, um, then props to them. So now, where does No Woman No Try go now outside of living on people's TVs and being on Amazon Prime? What's next? I mean, it's pretty cool that it's there though, right? Mm. My mum cried whilst I was sat in the room watching <laughs> it on the TV. You're there, but you're there. You know, it's great. For me, real change comes in small conversations like face-to-face and we're here. So um, I want to take the the conversation on tour and, and go into rugby clubs and, and hold Q and A's and discussions with players and men and women all around the country um, through the rest of the year. So that's I was trying to get some sleep, but now you've made me admit this, so I'm going to have to start doing this now. Um, the plan is to take the conversation to people and and help them be part of that because everybody's got questions and everybody wants to hear about it. So to make real change, yeah, I want I want to have that in person and give people an opportunity to ask. I mean, we've been fortunate on the good, the bad, the rugby that we've done. Uh, the Vodafone legacy pieces and a lot of those have always involved um, the, watch, uh, yeah, the women having games and catching on and and seeing how s- strong they, they every every club we've been to now has has a women's team but also they they make it work so you went to Bannockburn and they didn't have a full team themselves so they all pitched in together and they swapped sides but they make it work because they want to play but then you you look at the the wider thing of how how it improves the game. One of the biggest problems with the game right now, from any pers- perspective, is this, the illusion of the contact side of it over it. And the more women that play the game and enjoy the game, then the more their family grows up around the game. So you don't get what is perceived as mums don't want to see their boys or girls mm. get hurt. Mm. It completely makes a club fl- flourish. The more that you can have the women's game just as strong as the men's game, it makes a club flourish. 
for all the, the the bits that come with it. As I go back to women are highly motivated. If something needs doing, they get it done. Yeah. Um, you true. know, I think uh, I think it adds to the game and it, it will add to the future of mm. the game because it will keep more kids around the game if the both if one parent, both parents uh, are, are engaged, are, are engaged yeah. in the game and playing the game. You you want to be you are you t- your kids take. Uh, it's why I still have to play every now and again so that Mia actually can remember me play. I keep every now and again there's one on the TV. I'm like, there I am. She's like, No, you're not. That's not you. <laughs> yeah, Come on, me. stop lying. That's it. That few- guy's got hair. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, that is that's massive for the game yeah. moving forward. I think there's something about that. The women are already technically occupying a space they weren't allowed in, so we don't put any more barriers up. Kind of like once we're in, we're letting every the floodgates are open, we're all in, you know. And but like you said, the future of the game. There used to be signs that said no women and no dogs at rugby clubs. So, you, you, you know, we cannot allow ourselves to have us, any sport but rugby to to actually see the future to continue like that. So, yeah, we, you know, that's gone. And, and now you have to embrace the fact that women and dogs, I believe, should also yeah, be at rugby I went, clubs. I went, yes. I went to Sutton Coalfield RFC. I think if you put that sign up there, the, those girls up there, well, they, they were quite intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> I would sign, feel sorry for the president of that club. <laughs> the sign would get it and yeah, so would the yeah, person yeah, putting it out. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Brilliant. What is the best way, if I've watched this on Amazon Prime, to support? Go on Amazon and give us a rating and an honest review, preferably five star if it's not done. <laughs> but it, but honest reviews um, and a rating because that's that. <laughs> I love the I love the, the delay on so that. I love good. the delay on Emily. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, that, that's how we Sorry. Um, make make future like funding and 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 show that the message resonates you know we have proof and i actually had a message from amazon today that said customers are brutally honest so your positive reviews must be res- means it's resonating with with our customers so i was like well that's and that's coming from them so that must mean something are you out on social media that people can follow you and actually people who you, aren't and they can, can repost because what we talked about earlier mm. is that reposting is sharing and it, and is is helping so the really please, the really simple name drop point. all of that so. yeah uh, victoria h rush on uh, literally everything so, uh, and I, I am there flying my flag with my megaphone about women's sport being a worthy investment and a worthy watch. Brilliant. Well, she's doing the work. She's walking the talk and we can't wait to see where the journey leads next. And uh, Emily is giving her the air high fives, which is brilliant. That was my preach because of the delay. I thought it was better to symbolize. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Victoria Rush. We can't wait to see what you get up to next. Thanks for having me. There's um, more to come. I promise this is the first of many. I feel there's a uh, there's a, a hard knocks type thing. Mm, 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 mm. You know what? The, the 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 first question or the last question everyone keeps asking me is what's next. Do you know what? Just let me sleep. I need, <laughs> I need a week, just yeah. one week, and then the, <laughs> yeah, all God. you want is sleep. <laughs> 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 Try um, having three kids. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't have that problem yeah. yet, so I'm taking the most advantage uh, of it. I'm just going to say stop it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really. I love my little boy. And on the sage advice of the Lord himself, thank you so much for joining us, Emily Scarrett. And uh, may the next 60 minutes uh, be uh, ever as successful as the first 60 of the Women's Six Nations for you. Yeah, um, but Emily, can we get a few more tries? I'm going to stick with you this week in my Six Nations team, <laughs> but just, you know. I had so many messages asking if I was um, kicking or not. And how long I was allowed to play, and all this. All, none of them cared about me. There's it was all for the fancy people. league. <laughs> 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 so we will uh, be screenshotting more of that input, and make sure you join our league. We have a good Scars Rugby uh, Fantasy League going. Uh, I will just uh, whilst you talk, I will find out what the the uh, the number is. The, so the Lord enjoy. is leading the pack there. Um, I'm not going to mention how far down. <laughs> I, I am, um, but it would Did be you great. Have Scouse as your captain too. Um, it would be I great have, if I you could Poppy join us. My captain. Oh, okay. Make sure you pick uh, Molly Packer this week. Uh, that was the takeaway yeah. from round one. The, the Lord and the Good, the Scouse and the Rugby will be sharing all of the details. Uh, we've been the Good, the Scouse and the Rugby together with our friends at Allianz. We'll be back with more next time. <laughs> <laughs>